What's going on, you gamers? Here we are back with some more Outriders. Today is Thursday, meaning that there's some developers' news. So if you want to know what's going on in the world of Outriders, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back, all you guys and girls. As always, full things gaming, full things Xbox. Then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon? All the latest and greatest in content, hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun gameplay. And of course, I'll be covering the Ascent on the 29th, so if you're into that, why not hit that subscribe and bell, and I'll bring your coverage of that as well. But for today, like I said, it's Thursday, and as such, we've got some developers' news on what's going on in the world of Outriders. Now, this one's a little bit later than usual, because I think they've been having a few problems. So what we go over is three main things. The patch news, upcoming fixes and buffs, and ongoing list of currently tracked issues, which I'll try to keep to a minimum and not go over it too much if it's stuff that we've gone on about quite a few times. Now the first thing I'm going to go over is the patch news, but one thing to note, there is no patch update today, so if you want to know exactly what's implemented in the game, as of the moment they've not been able to implement the new patch because they've got a few things behind the scene and I'm sure they're having a few issues with crashes and such, especially in multiplayer. So this is going to be what they're going to say is going to be implemented once the new patch has taken place. So our latest patch is mostly complete except for one outstanding issue, the crashes for some users attempting to launch Outriders since the previous patch are still being investigated. This is an issue we are very keen to resolve before patching the game again as we do not want to subject players to such a crash any longer than absolutely necessary. Basically they want to remedy whatever's broke already or they may possibly make things worse. Obviously they want to fix this first and then go on with the next patch. Now what they're saying is if you are having this issue you can help them out by reporting it to them. What I'm going to do is chuck it on the screen now and if you are having this issue and you're on PC you can do this and then send it to them if you'd like to help them out directly. Right so that's pretty much the bad news out of the way, here's what you can look forward to as part of the upcoming patch once it's released. In the spirit of continued transparency and as the patch is nearing completion we wanted to share some initial patch highlights with you. Note that these things are not live today and may still be subject to change ahead of the patch release. This list is not exhaustive but is a selection of the things we know you'll most likely be excited about. So it's not everything but it is probably the highlights. So upcoming fixes and changes. Will improve the multiplayer experience to the rubber banding and packet loss should now be reduced for players under 350 millisecond pings which I would hope would be most people unless they're on red bar and it's going crazy so fingers crossed that will help a lot of the community out for that multiplayer experience which at the moment we are all kind of struggling with the connection wise. Next we'll fix the Technomancer's Borealis Monarch set and correctly grant the 90% damage increase to any frozen targets. So it's the one that they have kind of fixed at the moment but it is still sometimes not working you've got to take off your gear and put it back on again they're saying they're going to remedy that completely we'll resolve an issue with the devastator statue set and change its description to match its behavior the new description is while either tremor or golem is active increase firepower by 100 percent and weapon skill leech by 100 percent for you and your teammates wow that's that's significant actually. The old description was using either Tremor or Golem increases firepower by 100% and weapon skill leech by 100% for you and your teammates. The old functionality meant that the statue set bonus could end after 8 seconds. Now the one they've changed it to either Tremor or Golem is active that could be ridiculous. That could I believe if in the right cases could almost be or could be and 100% uptime could be crazy if you've got some Technomancer friends they will be hitting some ridiculous blight round numbers yeah that could be a lot of fun I'd like to see that in play actually next up we'll fix an issue that can cause the tricksters hunt the prey to not turn the player towards an enemy's back if aiming down the sights immediately after activation this one's gone on for a while so it's good to see them fix that one will improve the targeting of Trickster's Venator's knife so that it should now more consistently target a player's intended enemy. Will implement a change to the anti-duplication system so that your equipped items will not be taken into account when checking whether to re-roll a dropped duplicate. So in other words, after the polling and after finding out what people were after, they have taken that into consideration and they've gone with what most people went with was yes, they would like to see that implemented, meaning that when you're dropping that stuff, the reroll will not affect whatever your character has equipped on the next patch. 
will fix an issue whereby players who are level 50 may appear as level 1 while in a party. Ok and now the most fun stuff, the upcoming buffs. Pyromancer, Feed the Flames, the ammo replenished by the bullet absorption mod has been increased to 40%, previously 33%. I, out of all of them honestly that's not really the buff that I think is needed most but yeah any buff is good if you're using that for your weapon builds, probably nice but not many of them going around for the pyros at the moment. Volcanic Rants, the resistance debuff provided by the susceptibility mod has been increased to 50%, previously 34%. Ah, so trying to make it more, more likely that people are going to try and use gun builds on pyros. I still don't think this is going to make people go away from AP pyros, but we'll have a little look. The Reload Boost and Lava Shots mods have had their perks swapped. Reload Boost will now increase Anomaly Power, previously it was Firepower, and Lava Shots will now increase Firepower, previously it was Anomaly Power. That could be quite interesting, we're going to have to see how that works in game. But yeah, it definitely looks like they're trying to buff the Volcanic Rand, so we'll have to see how that plays once it's actually in place. Ash Blast. Ash Blast has had its base skill cooldown reduced by 5 seconds, from 27.5 to 23.5 seconds. The buff duration of the Death Sentence mod has been increased by 3 seconds, from 5 to 8 seconds. This is something I mentioned ages ago, it's the Torturer set, it doesn't work as intended at the moment. It looks like they are listening to people and they are trying stuff. I don't know if this will be a significant enough increase, I don't think it is, but it is a step in the right direction. Next up is the Trickster. Borrowed Time reduces the cooldown of Borrowed Time by 3.5 seconds, from 13.5 seconds to 10 seconds. Slow Trap. The cooldown of Slow Trap has been reduced by 10.7 seconds, from 30.7 to 20 seconds flat. That's quite a big, quite a big leap forward. Not too many people be, there's not too many people that use slow trap. It's kind of a niche one, but maybe that'll make people give it a try. Time rift. The cooldown of time rift has been reduced by 3.4 seconds, from 15.4 seconds to 12 seconds now. Increase the dot damage of the a little bit of pain mod by 71%. That sounds significant, I've got to admit I know very little about the Tricksters, so you'll have to let me know in the comments if that's good, it sounds like a big buff, I don't know too much about Tricksters, it's the only class I haven't managed to kind of work around properly yet. Next up, condense the dot duration of the A Little Bit of Pain mod to 6 seconds, so definitely they're trying to put a lot into that, so if that is a big buff, that may well mean that that's one of the best things for the Trickster. Now, like I said, let me know if I'm completely off track here and it's not good in the slightest, but that sounds like quite a significant buff to me. Increase the armor and resistance debuff provided by the Time Crack mod to 35% was previously 25%. Increase the weapon cleave damage provided by the pain transfer mod to 20% weapon damage was previously 10% weapon damage. So definitely trying to boost the trickster here, that's a really nice thing to see. They may well be able to pull out some ridiculous numbers now, especially if they're buffed by the pyro, as let's face it, they're already doing pretty crazy numbers with their crits. And next up we've got Technomancer, Pain Launcher. Reduce the base cooldown of Pain Launcher by 23 seconds. Wow. That's <laughs> that's significant. From 40 seconds to 17 seconds. That's, I don't understand. They must have realised there was an issue with that. Ridiculous. That means you'll be able to use Pain Launcher so, so many more times now. You're going to see a lot more Pain Launcher builds. People might actually be able to use it. That should be quite fun actually now. Because once you've got all your cooldowns on, that definitely, definitely might be a fun thing to use. Scrapnel reduced the base cooldown of Scrapnel by 5 seconds, from 22 seconds to 17 seconds. Again, it looks like they're trying to really make it so that the builds people have in place at the moment, they're trying to make it so that they swap them off and go for something else. Maybe it's to try and keep the players playing, give it a bit more longevity, I don't know, maybe they're trying to make it a bit more... Maybe they're trying to make it a bit more rounded, which would be nice, but definitely they're trying to make it so that you don't have just one set build. Hopefully they will get there eventually. Freeze Turret. The Hellshot mod has, has had its SPF set to 1.5, previously was 1. Means it's got a bit more from status power, meaning it will hit harder if you've got a lot of status power involved in your build. Next up and we've got the Devastator. 
I'm interested to see how this one goes. Boulder Dash. Using the skill will now provide significant 65% damage reduction during its animation. Players can now press trigger again to use an AO attack, AOE attack during the run animation. That could be quite fun actually. I'd like to see how that works. They obviously know the animation is dodgy. So we'll see how many people actually use that AOE attack and how it performs kind of damage wise. Endless Mass. Enemies affected by Endless Mass can now be damaged and killed during the animation. That's a, that's a biggie. That is actually much, much better because a lot of times that wasn't being used just for the sheer fact that that was actually really annoying. The fact that you'd use that, then straight away target that, and then steer away from it because you're not hurting the thing that is stuck in the Endless Mass, that's quite a nice little change up. Next, change the Wide Horizons mod so that on top of the range increase, the mod will allow Endless Mass to ignore the enemy's skill absorbing skin, used by Alpha Perferos and Brood Mothers. Ah, so it looks like that's going to be able to target a lot more things. They're definitely trying to make it so that people mix up their builds a little bit. And reflect bullets. Ending the skill early will now refund a part of the cooldown up to 90%. That's actually significant right there. I know it might sound like it's rubbish, but a lot of people could still use that just to get the buff to the anomaly. Save it, tap it again, buff to the anomaly, tap, tap, tap many times as you want, anomaly buff at all times. That definitely could work in favour for AP Devastators. Next up, and we've got universal buffs, so all around buffs. Armor mod buffs. Personal space will have its damage bonus increased from 15% to 25%. Crit stack will have its anomaly power boost increased by 21%. Things like that are nice to see because not really many people tend to do the hybrid builds and such. So anytime they do something like that, hopefully it'll make things a little bit more of a change up and you may see some changes to a certain build or people try a different playstyle altogether. Stand Tall will have its base firepower bonus increased by 20% and its base anomaly power by 16%. Again, that's actually one of the better mods, so that's actually quite nice. Perseverance Shield will have its base shield value increased by 40% from base 25 to 35 now. It also says that it will fix the bug where Perseverance Shield could trigger and grant shield after death, which is nice. A Blazing Aegis will have the armor increase it grants increased by 21%. Plate Dodger will have its armor value grant increased by 12%. And Weapon Mods Anomaly Enhancement will have its co-efficiency increased from 30% anomaly power to 40% anomaly power. That's quite nice, that mod was already quite good in some builds, so definitely for hybrid builds that will be really really good. And Bone Shrapnel will have its damage increased by 5%. Now, I don't know if that's Bone Shrapnel free, but I would imagine it probably will go over to that as well. I guess we'll find out. If not, that's just the original one. But I think that's probably all incarnations of that. Now, I'm just going to pick out the highlights for myself of the ongoing, ongoing currently tracked issues because there's quite a few of them. The first one is State of Stadia. Stadia will need to be brought in line with other platforms exactly the same as they've been saying for quite some time. They're continuing to work on this and they hope to fix it soon. They apologise for it going on for as long as it has. They hope to bring it in line with other platforms soon. Stuck 99% accolade progress. Issue being investigated. It appears to only be present on accounts that have a character present before or during launch day of April the 1st. April Fool's Day, it was always going to come back to bite them at some point. While our investigation is ongoing, we have manually triggered the missing accolades for the users who previously helped us investigate this matter. We may be able to fix all other affected users via a patch once the issue has been resolved. So again, it's something they're looking into and trying to fix manually by the looks of it. Now next up, and this is a good one, they're mentioning that our latest patch significantly increased and this is the patch that's already gone live, not this one that will go live. The Xbox sign-in times from the vast majority of players are now much, much better. So if there are any issues, I'd say head over to Reddit because for myself and for most of the community I've seen, it is so much faster signed in now. It is really, really is a blessing. Next up, one that I didn't know about, Grand Opening Mod and other mods may not activate when a player uses their last magazine. They're saying that this one is currently being investigated. I didn't even know this was on their agenda, I didn't know this was something that happened. So yeah, again, it looks like there's a few mods that definitely are bugging out still. 
Trickster's Venator Knife may target a wrong enemy. They're kind of looking into this one again. Trickster may be unable to revive others or be revived themselves in multiplayer if using borrowed time in expeditions. So you might want to be mindful of that. Again, being investigated still. And the Technomancer's Plague Sower set does not consistently apply apply its bonus so at least it's not consistent with that but it is consistent in the fact that most of the set bonuses tend to have issues most times finally technomancer turrets may fall through the ground issue being investigated if your turret falls through the ground i would say hit that again get it back in your inventory you're gonna have to chuck it out again because you pretty much can't do much with a turret that's through the floor but yeah, in general, that is the majority of it. There's a few more, but I'd honestly say if you've got any issues, just head over to Reddit, maybe give them a little, little heads up and they may be able to help you from there. But as always, guys and girls, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, take care. I'll see you on the next day.